wounds of President Eisenhower, made just before his heart attack, are dramatic evidence of the suddenness of the illness that shocked the nation. The president had never looked better, according to the friends who golfed with him at Denver. Nearing the end of his work and play vacation, he seemed rested, refreshed, and in unusually good spirits. Stricken at the Lafayette Street home of Mrs. Eisenhower's mother, the president was helped into a car in the early morning, rushed along this street to the Fitzsimmons Army Hospital, and placed in an oxygen tent in an eighth floor suite. Meanwhile, leaving Washington Airport for Denver were Press Secretary James Haggerty and Colonel Thomas Mattingly, a heart specialist from Walter Reed Army Hospital. A shocked country waited tensely. In the Denver church where he worshiped, in churches and synagogues all across the nation, Americans of many faiths and many creeds joined in one common prayer, a speedy and full recovery for their president. Though the seizure itself was not severe, the danger of complications weighed on the hearts and minds of the people. Leading the churchgoers in Washington was Vice President Nixon, facing grave new burdens in the fateful days ahead, solemnly pledging to carry on Ike's policies. Summoned to the hospital, a famed Boston heart specialist, Dr. Paul Dudley White, declared that prospects were reasonably good for the president's complete recovery. Also arriving was the president's son, John, who came to comfort his mother, staying in a room across the hall from his father's suite. A long vigil as America waits and prays and hopes. <laughs>